Hello and welcome to Art Today. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist by Pencil Geschichten. And today I'm going to have part three of my recipe book putting together art project. And today's video, I decided I'm not going to cut short at the end of two hours. Uh, today I want to color all of the fruits and veggies that I sketched out throughout the last two weeks. And you can see for uh, photos mm -hmm. links in the high cards to those videos if you want to uh, look back if you're just joining um today i want to use neo colors and you can see here this is my setup i'm gonna zoom you in uh once i start working so i do have the two trays of neo color crayons this is going to be my palette where i'm going to mix everything. This one here is the tray where I collect the neo colors that I used so that I can uh, put down the numbers later on for the blog post and uh, you don't have to write anything down for what number combination I'm going to use. You can find that on the blog. And uh, in front of me I do have my swatches that you cannot see but ta-da here's one and uh, the other one sitting right underneath the mic, so I'm not going to move it. Um, but these are the swatches, and I'm using a Pentel water tank brush with a very thin tip uh, to paint today. I did, before I started recording, I did um, put my fruits and veggies into stacks, and I zoom you in now. And I did, um, I did put all the blues together, all the greens, all the mainly reds and so on and so forth, so that I can work as efficiently as possible. Now this particular one here and the next one up is just a single shade. So I only have a blue one once and I'm going to only color uh, like a base layer and I'm going to decide which uh, ground tone to take. I think I want a gray for all of the uh, drawings and I think I'm best with the paints gray. It's a bluish gray so I'm going to choose that for all of the ground, all of the shadows and stuff. Then for the blueberry, I need a bluish purple, bluish purple. And I think I'm going with night blue. I like that quite a lot. Night blue, there we go. And I need a green, of course. Very juicy, juicy green. And I'm going with going with the light one and shading in so I'm going with grass green uh, in when in doubt I will always use the uh, lighter tone because I can go in later and shade so on my palette which is off camera for now but for the first one I will um, show you what I do let me see camera yes so this is the paints gray and i'm going to put down a whole spot for the paints gray uh, so that's going to be the paints gray corner i'm going to put down it's off camera i'm sorry bit of oh, let me pull. there it is a bit of the blue and a bit of the grass green Grass green, I'm oh, uh, probably going to use some more often. And I'm just now going to, I'm going to start with the paints gray just to show you. And then I'm going to um, put the palette off camera again. I'm going to liquefy the pigment and put it to the paper. The paper that I'm using is uh, mixed media paper or watercolor paper. I do have two different kinds of papers that I'm using. Why you might ask? Well, because I need to go paper shopping again. I didn't have enough watercolor paper for 
all of those 70 something uh, drawings. So cleaning my brush and then I'm going in with the green because that's furthest away from the gray so I cannot make things bleed on accident. Going to just base layer. Nothing fancy. No shading yet. I think I'm just gonna base layer all of them. All of the uh, drawings and next week I will probably color for the shading. So either more neo colors or tombos and I'm thinking I like the idea of mixed media and putting in the tombow markers which is ink, water soluble ink for um, for the details and the shading. So it's all going to be very very basic coloring here. I have to do some mixing already especially when it comes to like the mangoes or apples or pears because they uh, don't only come in one color. So there we go. Gonna put, put those to the side to dry while I go on with the next. I have to reach to put this down. There we go. Number one, check. Number two is the blackberries. Um, I'm going to use the same green, the grass green, on the stems and leaves here. And actually on the leaf itself I need a bit of a darker tone so I'm going to take the emerald green. I can find it. Um. Hmm. It's actually kind of bluish, but I can I can manage. Let's take the emerald. It's it's gonna be fine. Mm -mm -mm. Have to find it though. Emerald. There we go. So I'm going to put that next to the grass green. I can mix in some of the grass green with the emerald green because the grass green is yellow from the tint is yellow and the emerald is uh, blue so I'm by mixing the two it's gonna it's gonna gonna balance out the amount of yellowness or not yellowness in the dark green. Okay. So the blackberries, of course, are black, but they're not only. Um, they actually have a bit of a purple tone in there, so I'm going to use indigo. Indigo blue, that's what it's called. But it actually has quite the purple tint to it, so I'm going to use that for coloring. I'm gonna bring in a bit of black in a second but first I want to let this dry just a teeny tiny bit and I'm going to move on to the Payne's Gray for the ground here while Purple dries a bit. And I need the black. There it is. Just a smidge. And I'm going in with the black. I still definitely let the purple show. Mm. 
also having only enough color to uh, well color the berry but not have it dark enough to cover up my line work so number two is done I'm going to clean my brush put it to the side and the next one up is let's stay with purple which is the red cabbage um, so we've got I can go either super dark purple or maybe a bit more yeah I'm definitely gonna go more to the indigo which I just had used this one and I'm also gonna have aubergine in there <coughs> excuse me which is more of a reddish purple I almost need like a mauve too it's called mauve because uh, there it is I need for the veins here I need a bit of a lighter tone so I'm going to put that down the indigo and the aubergine and the mauve I'm going to start with the mauve and I'm going to, sorry about that, but for whatever reason, I do have trucks driving here today. I'm going to put aubergine on top to not have it be too bright. But I need quite a bit of light pinkish purple for those veins here. And I'm going in with the aubergine right next to it. So Okay, now I'm going to bring in the dark indigo just a smidge to darken up some parts. And I'm also mixing it with the aubergine. Okay, now a bit of paints gray for the ground. shouldn't paint my table <laughs> painting my table more than I'm painting my painting ah gosh all right I'm also having don't know where I smudged my fingers into purple paint but well so there is red cabbage number one red cabbage number two Um, let's go a bit more with the aubergine tone. Don't think I need the mauve anymore. So let's go with aubergine solid on the outside. And then 
only here and there on the inside because there is also a lot of white on those cabbages. And here, solid, but also bringing in some deep indigo. To separate the two cabbage parts. And by cabbage parts, I mean part of the drawings. Just a smidge of dark indigo here. And then again, Payne's Gray. Now that I'm coloring these, I'm kind of thinking, okay, maybe I maybe I don't want to have details with the tombows on top. Maybe I just want to leave them like this. Because I actually like it. Hmm. So it might be that I'm just having one coloring video. Maybe have as part of the next video have a bit of white gel pen or something going on. Who knows? But this one's done for now. Oh no, I see something. Needs a bit of dark around here where the leaves meet. Just saw that. Kind of skipped it. Okay. Like this. Okay. Put that to the side. And now for the last cabbage. I'm definitely going to go more purple than... Uh, so more of a blue tone uh, than a warm red purple tone so I'm going to go in like this and then Going to leave parts white again. Because there is a lot of white parts in a cabbage, even if it's a red one. Intensifying pigment on the cabbage that's just laying down there. And then I'm needing a bit of um, like a beige tone. Well, yeah, why not? Let's go with beige. And I'm going to need that for the for this uh, for the chunky trunk part here just as a bit of a shading thing you know something like that and then as per usual I'm going to put in some Payne's Gray and I'm going to color the ground Let's see Maybe a bit more, where it's like really dark. Just 
cleaning my brush and then pulling the pigment towards the outer sections. Ta-da! There we go. These are all the purples. Those back. Now let me think. Maybe the greens next? Yeah, why not? Um, different kinds of greens. Uh, for example, do, 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 the dandelion. Uh, first, I need a beige for the string here that holds it. I could use that. And then. Mm, a light olive, maybe. Yeah, light olive. And the rest of the color of the green color that I already have on the palette. So, light olive, which is a yellow tone, a yellow green. Others would call it lime. So something like that. I'm going to give it like almost a solid layer. Then I'm going in with the darker green. Just dumping in some pigment. more okay and now paints gray as per usual for the ground Maybe I need a bit of a darker green, something like a chrome oxide. It's more of an earthy, not so bluish green. Let's take that and add it a bit. It's like a grayish green almost. Next, I'm running out of space where to put things here. Uh, next, I would go with the Romana salad. So, I need the beige for this part here. And this is way, way darker. Mm. So for that, I would actually go with um, Mass Green and mix in some of the tones that I already had, like the Chrome Oxide or the, uh, what's it called? Light Olive. I'm just dumping in color. Not going for the veins right now. I'm going to add a bit more of the light olive there. But 
first I wanted to have the um, leaves colored in so now a bit of uh, the light yellow uh, light yellow mm -hmm -hmm. the light olive and now I'm going in with a bit of the emerald green mixing that with the moss green the moss green being way more on the yellow part of the spectrum than the emerald green and the emerald green actually is on the blue part of the green spectrum so by mixing those you get like the forest green or um what else sap green something like that so very earthy but in the midst of the warm and cold part of the spectrum like the dark fresh green you know okay some more here. Ta da! Now for the paints gray. Bit underneath here. Ta da! Got it! Romana Salad Colored. <laughs> it's like, again, assembly line style. But I have to make some space now to put the paintings onto my other desk. I'll just move some because I can't reach that far uh, from this space here. So I had to move it way, way more to that part. Uh, next up, broccoli, which is on top, pretty much what I did right now. And on the stem, it's a bit more yellowy, grass greeny. So let's go for grass green. Uh, do I already have the grass green? Yes, I do. So let's get some more of that for the stem parts. Dump in some olive as well, just a bit. For the stalks, um, a bit more olive maybe, just a smidge. And uh, then it is a very dark green. So dark green actually looks closest to what I need. I will, will have to mix dark green. There it is. So I'm going to mix the dark green with the moss green. Yep. Because the dark green is also kind of um, on the blue part of the spectrum and I need it to be dark but smack down the middle. Maybe leaning only a slight little bit to the cold side. Mm. Needs to be actually even darker but that can be remedied by putting down more pigment more of the dark green pure going in And some more of the mixture just to have a bit more of color intensity. And uh, also 
uh, crank up the texture pretty much. Okay, bit of the paint's gray. There we go, and uh, now for the very dark green, I also have to color in a few of the leaves here. But for that, I had to let the green, the light green, dry a bit. So, ta da! Broccoli! The next one is kale, which is pretty much the same color spectrum that I had before. So I'm going to use the rest of the moss green with emerald green for the stalks. And uh, I'm going to use dark green with moss green for um, the leafy parts here. And just the loose way that I did um, uh, draw these leaves in, I'm, loose, I'm using the same loose wrist as you can see here when I'm coloring. So this is not exact by by any <laughs> by any means, not at all. It's just dumping in pigment, making it squiggly and Therefore, it enhances the texture and the contrast if I don't have everything smooth. Need a bit more dark here. So here, thinking about using some blue to shade, but don't think that I actually need it. I need a bit more of the lighter tone just to add to the stalks. Okay, and then paints gray. My neighbors do weird things. Sorry about any noises. Might want to close the window. All right, so there's the kale. It's going to dry now. And I can move on to fennel. So fennel is pretty much a mixture of, uh, let's see, light olive and grass green. So I need some more light olive. Having enough of the grass green, I think. So I'm just going in, especially here. Something like that on the outside here, and then 
the grass green comes in from the top so it goes on the bottom a bit and goes here A little bit of the dark green that I used for the kale. Mixing some of the light olive and the grass green. That and now paints gray, and we're almost good to go. A little darker. I think I need to put down some more pigment onto the palette for the paints gray. So I think I used it all, which means that I have to dry up. The spot where I used paints gray before I go in with my crayon and add some more. There we go. Um, the next one again is fennel. So light olive. There was some purple in there. Purple and yellow makes brown, but wow. I'm going to use remaining light tones, light green tones that I have for the fennel. I'm going in with the medium tones shade. Going in with a dark for this, uh, the green shrubbery <laughs> that almost looks like dill. So a bit more shading here, and then maybe a bit more here. Clean my brush and pull this out. Okay, Payne's Gray for the bottom. There we go. Fennel done. Can go to dry now. And then I do have green bell peppers. Um, they are a combination of grass green, emerald green, moss green, and dark green. So I need to dry my palette so I don't have enough pigment anymore. But on a wet palette, I cannot put down pigment either. So I'm taking these four. The emerald. And the dark. The moss. And the grass. Do 
vanidolite, olive, no, not for the bell peppers, I don't think. So I'm going to mix grass green with moss green now. That's where the lighter parts are. Okay, mixing in some of the dark green for the stem, which is still on the light side, but a bit darker than the skin of the pepper. And then I'm going with the dark green and the moss green for the shading parts. green just a smidge to enhance the vibrancy of the green adding a bit dark green here at the stem a bit of the pure dark green also here and then a mixture of moss and dark green here and also on the stem, and then a bit more of the grass green and the moss green up here. Paints gray. There we go. By splotching the green tones um, together, you really get some nice texture onto your subjects. Now this is the final paprika, bell pepper, paprika is the German word. Uh, I know that it's uh, paprika for you guys in the English speaking world is the powder. Funny enough, that's also in Germany. In German, you say paprika also for the powder, but you say it for the bell peppers too. So, going to in with going in with some emerald for these dark parts here. Dark green for the stem, with a bit of moss at the end. See some more emerald in these dark parts here, and then a mixture of emerald and moss for the lower part with a bit of the dark green. Need a bit more grass green and a little bit more of the moss. Mixing the two just to have a bit more vibrancy again here on the light parts on top of the bell pepper when the light hits. There we go. Bits of the dark green just to and contrast. Okay. 
Okay. And some more paints gray. It is pretty much the same every time. It's just you have to know where the light comes from in your painting, where you want to have it. You want it on the left, on the top, on the right, bottom, whatever. And uh, then you go with two or three tones that are suitable for whatever um, thing you're painting. And I'm now going to close the window quickly because I'm getting annoyed with the, um, with the street noises around me. Next up is um, celery, celeriac celery. So for that, I actually need to add a bit of Chinese green, which is a yellow tone. And I need to have a yellow green and a yellow green and grass green. I uh, actually have enough grass green down there on the palette. can use that. But see these leaves here? They're almost yellow. And I'm adding a bit of lime. What's it called? Yellow green. Bit to that. A uh, bit more yellow green. Also, where the light hits. So I'm mixing the yellow green with the Chinese green now to add some uh, some pigment where the light would hit or where there's the lighter part. And then I'm going in with grass green and the mixture of the before used two greens. I'm gonna paint in the rest here. Need a bit more of the pure grass. And I'm um, putting that down here. And then a bit more of the yellow green. Just again to not have the lighter side look too flat here. A little bit of the dark in between here. Okay, uh, maybe a bit here where there's a shadow. Yep, that's more like it. Then of course again need to ground this otherwise this would float and I don't like things that float in my paintings. So 
enough. Oh, maybe a bit darker down here. Yep, now it is fine. And I can go on to the next, which is more celery. Um, a bit more of the yellowish tone almost. Um, when it's a bigger land and it's a bit older it gets way darker here at the leaves So need a bit more beige. For these cut off parts here at the end. And I need a bit more of the light green, the light yellow green, that's what it's called. Just to add here. And then some chrome with emerald to darken the leaves. And as per usual, veins gray for the ground. There we go. I think I only have one more celery, I think. Yeah, there is another celery. And uh, I need the beige first for the cut part. The almost yellowish green for the lower part here. And then I'm going and getting darker with a mixture of grass green. And light green, light yellow-ish green, I should say. Bit of dark in here to contrast a bit. Need a bit more of the bright yellow green just to again intensify this part. I don't want to lose this because it's maybe a bit pale. Okay, smidge of the emerald just to have a bit of contrast. And then the dark leaves Moss green with emerald and dark green. Maybe I need a bit more dark green. Just a little bit. Okay. There we go. 
need a bit more of the Payne's Grey. Maybe a bit more dark green. Lost a bit of the contrast up here by having that dark gray here. So let's add some dark green here. Yep, that's what I want to go for. Salary check. <laughs> Um, next up, spinach, a lot of spinach, let's see, let's go with the single spinach first to uh, dry my palette though, because I need to put down some more, some more uh, pigment, so I'm going with the dark green, the grass green, and the moss. Mixing grass and moss for the lighter parts. Which also includes the stem. And mixing dark and moss for the darker parts by letting them bleed into each other like so. Uh, they make their own nice little pattern of things that are dark and light and that actually really helps with um, texture and uh, depth, it doesn't look too, too um, flat. And some more of the light tone. A little bit more of the grass green, just a bit. Yep. And Payne's Gray for... here cleaning my brush and just going in with water moving the pigment upwards single leaf of spinach and uh, let's go for a couple of spinach spinach leaves we need some more moss Going just like I did before, lighter parts first, going in, down, pigment, and in this drawing here, for example, I say that the light comes from the upper right hand side. So 
mixing in some of the dark green into the moss for the darker parts here. very dark here going back to the lighter so the mid-tone uh, pretty much for these leaves here need a bit more of the dark green I'm just really dumping the pigment um, Some more of the light tone just to add a bit more and then I need to put down some more paints gray. in some paints gray here because um, need a bit more contrast and I don't want to introduce a new color uh, I'm already working with the darkest green so I need to mix in another color to darken things and I think the gray is just fine and here is that uh, one more spinach light green light green This time around I will change things up a bit in the way that I paint, which means I'm going in now with the darks for those leaves. The stems are super light, so I'm going in with the dark first. Need a bit more of the moss. Just to intensify some of the contrast of the leaves next to each other. And you can see I'm just staying on the right hand side of the leaves so that light dark light dark okay mm, for the lighter part I'm going to take a bit of light olive and yellow green just a bit mixing those two and that is enough for the stems, I think.
And then I need a bit of the beige. for these parts down here and again paints gray very little pigment but lots of water just to make it light There we go. Next up are apples, which are quite the yellow. So I'm taking, so it's a yellow green. So I'm taking the bright green, the bright yellow green. Then I'm taking the Chinese green and the light olive and I'm going to start coloring Need a dark brown for the um, for the stem, and I think I'm gonna take raw umber because it has a greenish tint to it. Um, raw umber. And then again, for the ground as per usual, paints gray. I think it's a very nice um, supporting neutral. And by supporting, I mean it, it uh, goes into the background real easy. And it makes whatever other color next to it pop. I think I need a bit more the bright green, bright yellow green for a bit of a shadow here or deeper color, something like that. Golden delicious apple. It's, this is a bit too heavy. Okay. There we go. It's the last green one that I'm gonna color now, and then I have to reset my palette. And uh, I'm also thinking. If uh, I, yeah, I think I will have a break um, 
you will not see it. Um, I will just use the blow dryer on um, on all of the pieces that I made so far so that I can um, that I can dry them off and then stack them and now let me see no, I think I want less of a yeah I want a bit more of a pale yellow for the inner parts so I'm going to put that down. The other one was a bit too red-ish for my taste. I also have to refill my brush. And I don't need the camera running for that. Or at least, well, I have the camera running, but I'm going to cut that out in editing later. Don't have to have that in the video. It's not really interesting. Going to take a bit of the Chinese green because again it's a yellow, but it's a bit more of a stronger tone, but still in the same realm as the pale yellow that I used. And I'm just going to add it here and there. Now for the stem again, I'm going to take raw umber. And uh, also for the kernel thingies there and here as well. And now, as per usual, paint's gray. Okay, so I'm gonna see you in a hot second. Okay, on to the next. And I thought orange would be a good thing. Um, putting down some Payne's Gray at the palette first. And then I have to see what I do like for orange. And I think I want fast orange and saffron. Fast orange and saffron. And I also need a bit, oh, I need a lighter thing also. Well, let's do the normal orange. And I need a green. Um, let's go for moss with dark. Moss with dark green. All right. Also need a bit of the raw umber. Actually, I could put it next to the Payne's Gray because I think for the stems, I'm going to use pretty much raw umber only. And then the oranges. So the super light one. Oops. The medium one. And the saffron for shading. Okay, let's start with the green because it is upper right hand corner of the painting. So it should work pretty well not to smudge things later. There we go. Bit of the raw umber 
Fuß, dann and the medium orange for the oranges. I'm taking the lightest orange for the fillet part here of the orange. So. almost like an apricot orange it's uh, very muted so I'm going to put in the uh, orange at the fillet here which is way more yellow and I'm going in with the rest of that tone here on top just to add some yellowness and then I'm going in with the saffron and the fast orange so the first one that I used for the shading here Going in with a mixture of the saffron and the fast orange also here, cleaning my brush and taking a bit more of the real, real orange. <laughs> and I'm going in with Payne's Gray to um, put in the ground everything sits on. There we go. Next one is this one here. Um, it's more of everything pretty much. Uh, I have enough green still for the um, I think the next yeah the next one has a green so I don't need more of that but here going to put in this mm, the skin actually is a pale yellow the the in between the rind the in between skin so I'm going to not have this white but a pale yellow at least the orange bounces off so I'm going to mix the fast orange with the normal orange for the rind Or for the skin, actually, I think the rind is the yellow part. 
whatever for the outside part of the orange and I'm going in with saffron and shading this a bit Need some more of the yellow orange. Just to add a bit of a warmer tone. Paints gray and here we go. It really is very, very simple once you have the um, the mechanism, the principle, the technique, once you have it down. Um, it is actually very easy to decide what you're gonna need or what you want for a certain painting or drawing. What tones? Do you want a colder one, a warmer one? Um, what does your painting need more of? It's real easy to get that sorted once you have a few under your belt. And now I think I have the last orange. Yeah. Um, gonna take a bit I oh, still have enough pale yellow but I'm taking a ton of the yellow orange because I'm not gonna add any fast orange anymore but I'm also gonna put on some uh, some saffron well let's put on some more pale yellow just a smidge I'm going to start with the pale yellow for the center here and for quite a bit of the skin thing in here. And then I'm going in with uh, a mixture of the orange and the rest of the fast orange that I had on my palette but I'm making sure that I have more of the orange than the fast orange on my brush filling these in and then Going to add a bit of saffron to what I have on the brush and just outline because the skin actually I think is a bit darker or it should be. It's just a nice contrasting thing. Okay, mixing in the uh, saffron with the orange. Now I'm going to paint the other orange here with everything that I have on my palette before I'm going to dry that part of the palette and add some more orange for the next parts. I have so much 
mixed pigment here <laughs> but I need to use that before I um, add any more I have to add some saffron I don't have any more and I need some pure saffron to put here just to have the uh, orange in the back be separated from the orange in the front. Okay. Um. Okay, I need a bit of the raw umber for the stem. And then I can go in with the mixture between moss green and dark green to color the leaf. And guess what? Right, you're correct. Paints gray. Paints gray, my savior. It's going down here. Uh, orange um, on the color wheel, the contrasting color is blue. So by choosing paints gray to put down here, which definitely has a blue tint. I'm actually enhancing the contrast between the two parts, which uh, makes the orange pop quite a bit, I think. It's a nice, nice color to put down to help the orange pop. Putting the orange aside. Next up are carrots. Going to take maybe a bit more of the grass green. Or the, no, I'm going to take the light olive. And whatever I mixed before, I'm going to mix that with the light olive. to paint in the greens here. And I can take a bit of the moss and dark green mixture for the part where it connects to the carrot. Okay, going to take the pigment that I still have of my palette from uh, the oranges. Just going to give my carrots a solid layer before I will add some more saffron just to darken a few spots up. Little bit of saffron. 
and I'm gonna darken here and also here. And as per usual, some more paints gray. So I'm almost halfway done with uh, my stack of pieces to paint and uh, I do have like, um, I think I'm at an hour 40 minutes. Mm. So this is definitely going to long uh, run long this video because i am having quite a few things to still color now want this to be one video only so folks i think well you by now you know how long i'm running because you're from the future. Um, if you find things a bit repetitive or boring either, uh, put me on double speed or something if you still want to watch. Or skip ahead if you just want to see a certain thing. Or do some artwork on your own and just let me be with you in the studio and uh, be pretty much um, company to you while you're painting or drawing yourself. That's actually what I really like to do with long videos. I like to, when I, when I know I'm having like a four or five hour painting and I'm not going to have the camera running. I'm actually watching stuff on the YouTubes, long art videos. So just saying there might be something for you. Some more saffron. All right, oh, I'm going to add a little bit of the raw umber on these ends here where the green is cut off. And I uh, need a bit of Payne's Gray. I just refilled my brush and I could almost refill it again. It's amazing. These, the paper here is so thirsty. And the longer you paint with the crayons the more water you're gonna need otherwise this looks this dry rubbed scrunchy like it just did here need a lot of water so I really need to thin out this gray uh, There we are. Carrot is done, but now <laughs> I have to move 
all my paintings here on the table again to make space for upcoming paintings. And now I'm going for pumpkin. Let's go with the umber. Then I think I do have enough water in the big brush so I can actually use that for the pumpkin. It's just faster. some more saffron for the shadows or the darker parts like here and here And some more of the light orange. Okay. Um, Paints gray. Oh, I need to put down some more Paints gray crayon. Ooh, not onto my painting though. <laughs> But onto my palette. This color combination pretty much screams autumn, uh, foggy mornings, and a lovely pumpkin. Yep. That would be that. Ooh. And now the open pumpkin. Um, I'm gonna take the remains of the light tones here. I'm going to squiggle them in. And um, going in with the light orange. Added to the flesh here. Um, adding saffron. 
pour almost like a like a brownish orange on that one. Um, some more pure saffron for the outer parts of this pumpkin. And then I'm going to take the fast orange for this pumpkin. Also going to put in some saffron because I want a bit of contrast. Need some raw umber for the stems. And now I'm going to switch back to the smaller brush. to paint in the green. And the beige, which I need to put down on the palette. And I wanna have the seeds painted beige, because they are not white in a pumpkin. Just gonna add a bit of the raw umber mixture, just a tad, to not have this look too flat. Okay, and of course, I'm going to ground it with a um, bit of Payne's Grey. Pumpkin's done. Now I can move on to the sweet potatoes because why not? Um, but I need uh, for the skin. I need a new color, and I'm going to take russet for it. There we go. So I'm going to put down a bit more of the fast orange and the russet. Actually, I do have enough of the fast orange still on my palette, but I need more water to uh, paint it in. Mm. 
also here. And the russet is a reddish brown for the skin that I think is closest to what sweet potatoes look like. we go Sweet potato number one, done. <laughs> My desk next to me really looks very orange over there. It's like, uh, like a ball of orange, whatever. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I just quickly had a sip of tea because my throat is really getting dry. And I have to refill my brushes soon, but I think I can manage painting the parts here of that sweet potato. And the fast orange now needs a bit more pigment. Don't have enough. I'm actually thinking about if I really want to move on with one video for the coloring because I have like 10 minutes to the two hour mark and just looking next to me to the stack of paintings that I still have to do. Oh well, I said I would so I'm going to just have it in one go. That was my hubby calling, so I had to have a pause in between. This is dry, 
So I can now <laughs> paint the ground. And I started the second timer for two hours just to know how long this video is going to be approximately. Whoop! Painting underneath again where I'm not supposed to paint and I want some darker here. I need to put down some more paints gray. Here and also, uh, I should also have the painting in frame. That would help, don't you think? I'm sorry, folks. And there, so here we go. That is the sweet potato. Now I do have the curcuma root, which is pretty much the same um, color-wise as the sweet potato. So russet out here on the On the skin pretty much more on here on here here and here and then a lighter orange in the midsection so the inner part that actually makes this wonderful yellow color when you put it into your food it's just like saffron, it really is very nice for food coloring. It's also healthy. <laughs> but I said that yesterday. I, uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm actually filming a couple of days in a row here. But I said that last time, last week, uh, when I drew this root, I said that this was really a nice... Uh, Spice as it is very anti-inflammatory working a bit more with the pain's gray. There we go. And now I do have oh it's the final orange. It's the final orange and I need green and also a bit more of the raw umber. So I'm putting down some, and I need the fast orange because I'm having a cantaloupe. So I'm going to start with the green, which is here and here. Oh, I might also put down some beige. Just forgot. But here's the green. And um, it's also green here. And of course, also here. Um, and I can take a mixture of the beige with the raw umber to have this skin or whatever you call it with a cantaloupe. Put that down there. go over this with the green again but there's 
that I need more green because that actually is green. <coughs> I'm going to take pure raw umber for the stem here. Also to shade this a tiny bit. And now I can go in with the fast orange to um, color the cantaloupe's inner parts. I'm going to have a little bit of the Payne's Gray for oh, it's maybe a little bit too little of the Payne's or I got some raw umber in there this is way too brown so I need to put down a bit of more of the blue gray So that was the orange stack. Now I'm going to pause this video very quickly. I'm going to clean up my palette here. I'm going to clean that and I'm also going to refill my water brushes and then I'm off to the next big stack. So either yellow or red. And I think I'm going to go for yellow next. On to the next part, the pineapples. I need a yellow, a really nice yellow. Um, I think I want the normal yellow and the golden yellow. And then for the outer parts, I'm going to take cinnamon and raw sienna let's find those raw sienna and cinnamon i'm also going to take the moss green and the dark green for the leaves i'm going to take raw umber and Payne's gray um, for the darker brown parts. Maybe do I need raw umber? Oh, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but let's, let's try this one first. Uh, I'm going to put down the Payne's Gray. And the two greens. The two yellows, of course. And the two browns, the raw sienna and the cinnamon. Let's start with the top. 
the greens because then that means I'm not gonna smudge anything. So green. Ta-da! Then going in with the lighter yellow. Then I'm going to add the golden yellow which is a bit richer in tone and makes hopefully for the shading color yes it does also the middle section here has to be darker It's very easy to get some some uh, movement in um, your artwork when you just take two very similar tones of uh, color and put them next to each other. It makes the painting look less flat. So I'm doing the same here with the brown. So put a bit down here. Around the pineapple. And um, add a little bit of cinnamon just where I didn't put any raw sienna so it's having a bit more of the darker tone here and there. Ta -da. Now of course I have to paint the ground this is sitting on. We go. Pineapple number one. Thank God. They're really not my favorites to paint. Uh, next up is this one here, and uh, I'm going in with the light yellow. Just coloring parts of the cubes here. Then I'm going in with the golden yellow and uh, go in for the darker parts here. But I'm also leaving white parts with this particular drawing or illustration. Because I think it adds to 
the um, the texture of this piece quite a bit. Okay. Now for the light brown. And a bit of the dark brown. Just a little bit, not too much. And of course, the green. Have to have some nice little leaves. And last but not least, of course, a little bit of paints gray, just to ground it. Because floating pineapples are not a good thing at all. Okay. Okie dokie, you are done. Then, oh, another pineapple. <laughs> How many did I have? Five. Oh gosh. Um, the yellow. A lot of brown. And of course, green, green, green. Need to put down more green pigment in a hot second. But first, finish this painting here. I think I need a bit more dark cinnamon brown up here. Just to add a little bit more contrast. Yeah, there we go. This goes to the side. And um, now I need to 
put down some more pigment and to dry the puppet first. I'm ready. So again, going in with a light yellow. Adding some of the darker yellow. bit of the raw sienna, just a little bit. Adding a bit of the cinnamon. And of course, a good pineapple needs some green bits on the top. So of course, I'm going to add that as well. Finish it off. Of course, I'm gonna give it the paints gray treatment. I think I want some more of the golden yellow in this particular part here. Just a little bit to have a bit more of contrast. And then I can finally color the final, not the final countdown, <laughs> the final pineapple. I'm going to start with the green on top. And now I'm moving on to the remaining bits of uh, Sienna and um, what was it? Cinnamon on my palette. 
might add a little bit of the yellow sometimes they have a, like a yellowish tint if they're not like really really ripe okay. I'm not having too much browns anymore on my palette there we go and now of course I have to and the shadows underneath. Okay, there we go. To make some space on my desk again. And I think I want to take a very, very quick break. Uh, you won't really realize it again because um, I'm gonna make sure to edit accordingly. This is, by the way, all the neo colors that I used so far. <laughs> Um, but I need something to drink, so I gotta go downstairs and get something to drink and uh, in a split second <laughs> I'm going to be back and color some more. Magic! I'm already back. You haven't really noticed me being somewhere else. All right, more to the yellows. Um, I'm going to, oh, I need some pale yellow for for, of course, painting my table <laughs> um, for the inner parts of the apple. Um, going to start off with that. In the outer parts I'm going to use the remaining yellows from um, uh, the pineapple. And I'm also going to add a bit of a red already, but just a little bit, or maybe am I? Mm. No, I could actually also use the light olive and go for the green yellow kind of apples. I think I'm having enough of the red apples coming up on the um, on the red stack. But I actually need maybe a bit more of a may green or a grass green here. So I'm taking the light yellow green. Oh yeah, that's way more like what I want. So you go here. Just a smidge of the raw sienna around here and a bit of the dark green too. Just a little bit and then I'm in the need for the raw umber. So I need to put down more Payne's Grey. Raw umber for the stem, also here and for the little 
seed of the apple and then I can take a bit of the Payne's Gray and um, ground the whole thing. You are grounded. Funny how something, <laughs> how a sentence can have so many different meanings, right? So, depending on the circumstance, you're saying it in. There we are. Apple number one, check. And, and uh, now I'm going for carrots. I'm gonna have yellow carrots and the ones that I buy are more of an earthy yellow. So I'm going to mix yeah, I'm actually having enough. Am I? Um, yeah, I'm going to take the pale yellow for the inner parts of the um, carrots. So actually, kind of pale inside, and then I'm taking the yellow here, and I'm going to add uh, raw sienna to it. To make it a bit more earthy. Going to paint the remainings, remaining uh, carrots the same. Mixing the brown into the yellow, especially where there's a shadow. And same goes here for the outside. And I need a bit of the green for the upper parts here. And of course, my trusty ground color. Careful not to pull it into the carrots, like in the into the slices, but really go around them. Need a bit more brown, I think. Just a little bit to shade here. Yep. That's the yellow carrots. Oh, was I out of frame? Sorry, that's the yellow carrots. And now mm. On to the pumpkin, or the squash, better said. Mm, I need more of the raw sienna. And I need some of the yellow that's still there, and the orange. Need a bit of the orange, a bit of the yellow. Uh, raw sienna, where are you? I think. Yep. Raw sienna and 
think the umber is enough that I have. All right, so green. Green for the leaves. Bit of the rhombo here for the stem. And I'm going to put down whoop, some more of the golden yellow and some of the orange. Then lots of the sienna. The raw sienna, that is. I didn't use any other. So let's take yellow and orange in the combo for the flesh of the pumpkin and then take in some um, raw sienna for the skin Some raw umber for the shadows. And also a little bit of the yellow for the upper part here. Ta-da! Um, of course, I'm going to take my trusty uh, Payne's Gray. There we go. Pumpkin or have a, why do I always say pumpkin? It's a squash. The squash is done. By the way, squash is sports. It always reminds me of sports and not of food when I say that word. But anyway, now we're getting towards the more intricate parts here. Um... I can definitely use the yellow that I have here for the inner part of the peach. And I can also use the raw sienna for the stone. With maybe a little smidge of the raw umber can use the remaining color that I have down here for the green. But then I need to find a bit of a red. Which red do I want? I actually like the scarlet tone for the peach. So I'm going to put in Scarlet and the Fast Orange, which is kind of like a peachy orange. So uh, are you the right one? Yes, you are. And I'm going to mix the two on my... Uh, little peaches here.
so having a little bit of the red in the stone because that is what's happening um, a little bit more of the yellow uh, let's take the light yellow of the green and of course this is not exactly Payne's grey uh, actually a bit of green also mixed into the gray so it looks kind of weird so I'm going in with a new batch of Payne's gray and put that on top There we go, a couple of peaches. Let's paint some more peaches. I need a bit of a bit more of the green. Okay, let's go with the leaves first. And then dump in some fast orange. And scarlet. And the other peach, of course, is going to have, <coughs> excuse me, scarlet as well. And then I need to add some more of that orange tone. And as per usual, to uh, finish this off, I'm going to add the gray shadow slash ground color. Thank you. 
And there's the peaches. On to the mango. Now I need to clean my palette a bit for that. I need the scarlet. I need a bit of a yellow green. So the uh, olive green and the light green are going to be. So the yellow green are going to be there. Then I need the uh, golden yellow pump there. And then, of course, I also need Scarlet. A bit more Payne's Grey. Oh, and a smidge of the Umber, of the raw Umber. Now I can go in first with the golden yellow. Going to color the mango, the inner parts. Maybe I should, yeah, I'm going to reactivate some of the brown orange here that's still in the corner just to add a bit more texture. And then I'm going in with the Scarlet. Adding more of that wonderful red color. And I'm adding a smidge of the red umber here just to, um, uh, not the red umber, the raw umber to uh, have a bit of more contrast going on or shading. And I'm going in with the green. Put that in. Need a bit of the dark green here where there is the shadow color and uh, then I need the raw umber for the stem here. And of course, as per usual, there's going to be gray on the ground. Part here needs a bit of a darker gray because it really casts a lot of shadow. Okay. Mango number one. Mango number two. Going in with a light green up here on top. 
And then going on to the scarlet here. Also scarlet here and these wedges. Uh, cleaning my brush. A little more of the light green. Dark green for the leaf. I need to have darker green. Yellow for the inner part, so oh, that's not really yellow. Uh, golden yellow. And of course, the stem, as always, gets a bit of raw umber. Doing some more of the intense red down here. And as per usual, you know the drill. I'm going to finish off this piece with um, paints gray ground. Putting in a bit more here. There we go. There's a mango. Um, let's paint another mango. Need a bit more of the dark green for the leaf. And this one is going to be a ripe mango, not one that um, is harvested too early and then shipped across the world and therefore is green. But actually this one is yellow and red. I need a bit more of the scarlet and a bit more of the golden yellow. I'm going to start with the golden yellow. And then come in from the other side with the scarlet. Some more of the golden yellow. Mm. And raw umber for the stem.
There's the mango. And it's too dry now. And the next thing is lemons. So I'm actually, let's see, um, I have one, two, three lemons. I need lemon yellow, so I'm definitely gonna have to clean my palette here. I'm quickly gonna do that. Alright, lemons. I need, of course, the dark green. I need uh, raw umber. I need the moss green. I need the paints gray. And I need a lemon yellow. Lemon yellow. Ta-da. But maybe also... Oh no, I can actually take the normal yellow as the dark tone. So see, these would be my f six <laughs> crayons for uh, the three lemon paintings. So I'm starting off with putting paints gray down. And then next to it, a bit of raw umber. Only need very little. The two green tones, moss green and dark green, and then lots of lemon yellow. And a bit of the normal yellow. And then I can start painting. So I'm starting off with the raw umber for the stem. And I'm going to mix the dark green and the moss green for the leaves. I'm going to leave things white here. I might, am I? Uh, I might add a bit of the pale yellow. Not really, no, I need, I need a contrast there. So I am going in with lemon yellow now. Going to color these sections here. And then I'm going to add a bit of the normal yellow, so it's a bit of a darker tone, but still 
it's not necessarily a warm tone it's just spot on sitting in the middle it maybe is a, a little bit towards the warmer side and lemon yellow is a yellow that's more on the colder side of the scale but it's very minimal there we go Gray for the ground. So since the light on the ground is coming from the right hand side, I'm going to have a bit of a darker grey on the left hand side. And there are lemons. Ooh, that was maybe a bit too far on the desk. There we go. And the next one for this one I need the smaller brush going in with lemon yellow for the middle and the peel Adding a little bit of the darker yellow, just where there's maybe a bit of a shadow going on. Adding green for the leaves. Lemons are very, very easy to paint. There is not a lot of things that you have to take care of because it's pretty much one or two very, very similar tones of yellow and you just leave parts open so that you don't want to have painted, meaning white space. It's a... Uh, Kind of easy to sketch. To dust. And ouch. Now for a final one. The final countdown. No, it's the final lemon. leaving white space here because I can go in with the dark yellow there if I or mix it with the remaining lemon yellow uh, if I don't have enough pigment which is the case so I'm just mixing both of the yellows and that gives me enough pigment to color the rest of the lemons paint that in Adding a little bit of the um, raw umber here for those end pieces and then a little bit of the green for the leaves.
And of course, paints gray to end this particular piece. I'm getting there. I'm really getting there. Halfway, a little more than halfway through my yellow stack. And then I do, quote unquote, only have the red stack left to color. There we go, there are the lemons. The lemons. I should maybe think a bit more about being in frame. I'm sorry, folks. I need to take a sip of my juice. Today I'm having this one here. Doesn't look too interesting, but that is because I have a lot of green and oranges mixed. So there's grapes in there, cucumber and uh, carrots, a little bit of ananas uh, or pineapple, as the English speaking people say. It's very yummy. Very refreshing. Right oh. Let's see. I can actually stay with um, the yellow, but I might want to add hmm. I might want to add a bit of a flame red, which is an orange almost. It's like a warm red, pretty much. I need more paints gray. I want a bit more of the moss green. And a bit of the yellow green and the normal yellow. Still have enough brown, that's fine. Okay, let's paint in the yellow. Paint in the yellow, maybe like here. A little bit of the green too. Then adding the flame red. And more of the yellow. Filling in the spots that were previously uncolored. Something like this. I need a bit of the raw umber for the stems, of course. Like so. And then I'm going to uh, add a bit of the green for the two leaves down here, but I need more water. Okay. 
need maybe a bit more of the dark green just for a little bit of um, shading underneath the pear. Just a little bit to make it a bit richer. There we go. And of course, I'm going to add Payne's Gray. Right in between here, I have to be careful not to make things bleed too much. There we go. I like the look of that. And um, now, oops, come on, Zara, reach. There we go. Uh, now it's, oh, more pairs. So I'm taking the same color combination. Uh, let's go for the brown first, for the stem. We need a bit of a pale yellow now for the inner part of the pear. Maybe I'm also going to add a bit of scarlet and make it a almost already red, super ripe kind of a pear. So, let, whoo, of course I have to throw down my brush because that's what you do. I'm such a pro. Ah, uh, gosh, uh, pale yellow for the inner part here, the flesh of the pear. There we go. Uh, mixing the flame red with the with the scarlet. the lower part here of the pair behind. Also maybe as a contrast pull it further on the left hand side put up, pull up that color and then I'm going to use the normal yellow for the rest. And of course, the gray. But I'm not painting with 50 shades of them, just one. Makes things so much simpler. <laughs> oh, I'm such a bad joke, pun teller. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> Shouldn't paint paint the underside of my painting, but the upper side would work really well. There we go. There are the pears. Oh, maybe I need a bit more of the stronger red tone here. This is kind of pale. So let's put in some more pigment here. That's more like it. There we go. Um, to the sides, and I think, yeah, this is the last pair of pairs. I had to, I'm sorry. I'm gonna start off with the stems again with the raw umber. Oop. Also, let's see, kennel, kernel thing, whatever they are called. Adding the green for my leaves. Okay. 
And it's just one leaf. <laughs> Actually, but well, that's fine too. Adding a bit of the dark green here where there's maybe a bit more of a shadowy area. There we go. And then I need a lot of pale yellow. And by a lot, I mean a lot. Quite the surface to cover. For this pair here, I'm going to use light green. So I'm going to take a bit of the yellow green and also the olive green, the light olive. Because the pairs with that particular shape, they are usually a bit um, greener and not so much red. I have to find it. What are you? No, you're the Chinese. Uh, green. Oh, I'm having the light olive in my hand. I can search for it for a long time. <laughs> Sheesh. Okay, the yellow green. And the light olive. Mix those two. And color. Let's see. I might add a little bit of yellow, but mm, actually I mainly like the green, so I'm going to enhance that a bit more, put down some more green before I start adding a yellow tone and for that I'm taking the Chinese green which actually is a yellow. And just like, well, oh, I'm really out of frame. I'm sorry, folks. Just like uh, with all the other pieces, of course, uh, there has to be some pigment for the ground. Just a little more. There we go. Now I can dry my desk too. I made a mess. This goes to dry and I'm moving on to ginger. Ginger roots. Um, Let's see. <laughs> I need... I think the raw sienna will be best for the outside part. Um, raw sienna. And for the inner parts, it's uh, the... Chinese green actually is best, uh, but the inner parts are only going to be at the next um, piece, the next painting. So I'm just going to start with uh, raw sienna here. And these are the last two parts of the yellow um, stack. 
this one here and the next one, the two gingers. Okay. And some of the gray for the bottom. Need to put down some more uh, paints gray because I'm running out of it pretty much. There we go. Ginger root. Ta da! And now for the last yellow bit. Um, I need ooh, some more of the Chinese green, which, like I said earlier, is this lovely yellow ish. It's actually a ginger color, I think. It's perfect for ginger. Um, then, of course, I need the raw sienna for the outside part of the roots. It's actually only one root. So, there we go. bit more here okay and of course the gray once I have this down I'm quickly gonna uh, dry all of the pieces that I just painted and that are on my desk because I need some more space there but you will not have to spend any empty time because I'm gonna again have things edited so that for you the busy part goes next right away so I think that's good there's the ginger and uh, I'm gonna see you in a hot second all right I am back um and uh, while I was on break having dinner and things like that, um, I decided um, to give the blueberries a second layer because they're the only one that stand out. All the other colorings that I did uh, did have shading and stuff and uh, this was the only one that has just one solid layer and not really a um, an idea of... Well, if if this is shaded or not. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the... That's the wrong one. I need the blue indigo. There it is. I think. No? Uh, yeah. Blue indigo and a bit of the moss green. And I'm just going to shade the blueberries and then they are just as um, painterly colorful as all of the other sketches. So I'm going in for the moss green and just giving it a second layer. There we go. And uh, same goes for the berries, so a little bit of uh, blue indigo in the darker spots just to, well, give it a bit of oomph, you know. And that's a technical term. Oomph is definitely a technical term, folks. It's not something that I'm missing a word for. There we go. A little bit of shadow here. 
and then of course also here because there's another berry just a bit of texture darkening things up even more down here behind the two berries and also here and that's that uh, maybe cleaning up my brush and just pulling the pigment a bit more especially here there we go now I can move on to the reds but I need to make some space at my desk again uh, all of the paintings should be dry yeah they are so I just made some space and uh, now I'm going to uh, the red stack I'm also gonna put my camera here because I'm gonna film a few uh, things for my vlog this week so I'm in pre-production um, I need hold on folks gotta you get some the behind the scenes here <laughs> I'm gonna let you in gotta have to put the camera the vlogging camera onto the other um, tripod thing because I can have it steady like this at an angle so it's like this and not like that just to film a bit of some nice things there won't be in the way it's just well maybe maybe I put it like this not in the way <laughs> but I can film some footage so this is a watermelon obviously and the watermelon definitely needs some red so so far I only used the scarlet and I'm definitely gonna use it again uh, I also need some more paints gray because I cleaned my palette off that's the blue indigo I need there it is I think no, that's the black. Where's my gray? Gray, gray. There we are. Paint's gray. Need that. But I think I also want a tiny little bit of a warmer red. So not a vermilion, but maybe a light cad red to color in the um, um, the watermelon. And I want a very dark green for this particular watermelon. I'm gonna have the red, uh, oh gosh, red, the light and dark um, striped one after that, where I'm going to use different greens, but I will use the moss green and the dark green for this particular one. So let's start with the greens. Bit of a moss green lots of the dark green uh, paints gray as per usual and the two reds scarlet and uh, light cat red and I'm going to start with the greens gonna mix the two and having a bit of a heavier um, leaning towards the dark green which is a cold green so let's color that a tiny sweet little watermelon really get in there with the dark green and 
I don't mind if there's some parts that are more moss greeny <laughs> and some that are more, um, you know, dark green. I don't care. It actually um, adds to the texture, I think. And if you look at watermelons in real life, um, they're not evenly balanced either. Some have yellow spots. Some uh, I don't, I'm talking about the solidly green ones. I'm not talking about the striped ones that I'm going to paint in a minute. But they even those solidly colored um, melons, they're not really solidly colored if you look up close. So I just cleaned my brush and I'm pulling the pigment upwards because uh, melons do kind of have this white in between flesh between the red part that is yummy and the green part that is so not yummy. So I wanted to pull a bit of a lighter thing there and then I'm going in with the dark green and just add a little bit more pigment to the bottom that will uh, have a bit of a contrast there. So, okay. Then I'm moving on to the red. I'm going in with uh, the light cat red only. And I'm just giving the thing a solid layer. Not going to the corners. Uh, I will leave that for the scarlet. Also, I'm not gonna go right up to the right piece, the right wedge, because they're also for the shading I'm gonna use the the scarlet. All right, uh, that looks halfway decent. <laughs> Going in with the scarlet, and I'm just being quite careful that I don't make them bleed together the green and the red because that would make brown I don't want brown I want this to be green and red you kind of have to be careful with um, those uh, colors opposite each other on the color wheel not to have them bleed together because that would just, depending on if you have a warm or cold tone it would either be a brown or a grayish, brownish, dirt, mud tone. If you want that, that's actually the perfect way to mix it. It's a lovely shading color if you really want it. But I think it's nice to have the mud on purpose and not on accident because you have things bleed together. So there we are. This is the red flesh of the watermelon. Now I'm going in as per usual. You've seen it a lot in this video. Going in with the paints gray. And I am shading and putting in the, um, the flooring, pretty much. The thing the watermelon sits on. And one thing that I always tell you when you work, when you paint, turn your work, make yourself comfortable. You're usually sitting there for a while, even with these fast kind of sketches, you're usually sitting there for a while when you paint, so be comfortable. Right, that's the watermelon. Now onto the other watermelon. This is the one that has the stripes with the light green. So before I choose the light green, I'm going in with the rest of the cat red. And you can see here, um, I'm not gonna need the uh, uh, paints gray in this particular one because I'm actually not having any any table or something. The, these are not floating, those uh, melons here. They're actually not floating. I need a bit more scarlet. I didn't have enough pigments on my um, 
on my palette. So I'm gonna add some more just to again give it a bit more oomph, just a bit more vibrancy there. Enhance it. There we go. That's more like it, don't you think? All right, now I need um, the dark green and the light green. I'm going to start with the dark green because I still have it mixed. Um, and I'm just going to add that color to a few of the stripes, every other stripe to be exact. Don't have to be super neat because I'm going in with the um, light green in a hot second too, but I can uh, color in gaps with that later on. For now, I just need to have a few dark stripes. Now for the dark, uh, the dark green, mm-hmm, oh, Sarah, uh, for the light green I'm going to take the yellow green, need quite a bit of that, and I'm also going to take a smidge of the pale yellow for the inner part here, sometimes it kind of looks yellow-ish. So I'm going to um, give it a bit of a yellow there and the green can run into that, which I think is totally fine. All right, so now for the yellow green, have to add some water and at the pigment I'm also gonna add a bit of grass green just to well have a bit more of a light a stronger light green this is a very very um, pale light green and uh, want a bit more of an oomph again, a bit more oomph. So I'm going to take the grass green. And add a bit of that. Especially here. can also mix it with the yellow green and uh, have a nice shade going on there. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh. There we go. Adding a little bit more. And a bit more of the dark green here and there, especially where the left melon is behind the right melon. There we go. These are the two watermelons. Oh, uh, maybe I'm. Oh, I could actually add a bit of the dark gray here on this button just to give it a bit more contrast. And then I need a sip of my drink, otherwise, my voice is going to be 
super cracky in one minute or two. All right, next up we do have beach roots. Um, let's see, three of them. So I do need, I do have the light green, so the yellow green and the grass green, I got that. But I need a very dark red. Almost, almost like a carmine. So why not take the carmine? And maybe a bit of the aubergine. Because I think that would be a nice shading color. There we are, aubergine. So I'm putting down carmine. It's a quite the pinkish cold red. And the aubergine is um, a reddish purple. So that definitely should work well together. Putting down some more of the light green. But also the grass green. And we're going in. So let's start. Start on the top with the light green leaves. I'm not going to color the stems because the stems are actually red. So it's just those leaves here. Just quickly have to <coughs> Okay. Whew. All right. Now for the stems I'm going to take the carmine red pretty Pure again, I have to be quite careful not to have the red bleed into the green. It's just the same as uh, with the um, what's it called? Watermelons that's the word I was looking for. So I'm gonna paint those beads pretty solid carmine. And then I'm going to shade them with the aubergine color. So far they look more like radishes instead of beetroot, but that should change pretty much now. So of course I have to darken this part, also this part and some more Aubergine here. Even more here. And also here. And of course the nose of this beetroot as well. Going back to the pink or carmine red. And I need a little bit more of the aubergine. Just a bit to darken it even, even more here. Okay. Adding a little bit of gray and we're good to go.
Okay, with the rest of the gray on my brush, I'm just going in here just to add a little more. All right, beat number one is done. And uh, now I can go in for beat number two. I'm gonna need a lot more of the carmine. I'm even thinking about not only adding the aubergine but also the dark indigo. So I'm going to put down both. Just in case I need the blue indigo. Just put down a little bit. But uh, just as before going to start with the leaves And the stems going to be carmine again. By the way, if you're looking to eat something high on iron um, and you don't really like the beetroot, the leaves are awesome in a salad and they have a even higher um, amount of iron in them as the roots. It's also perfect for staining things like eggs and such. It's a really pretty color. Or you could also stain rice or something with beetroot. Going in with the aubergine of course. Just to add a bit of shading. And I'm trying the dark indigo. Oh yeah. Oh I like that. But, oops. <laughs> Moved my camera. Back to the carmine, just to counterbalance all the stuff that is going on in the shadowy parts. Also here. There we go. And as per usual, a little bit of the paint's gray. Much more here under the root. There we go. Number two. Check. Um, and I've got this one, which is cut open here. And uh, beetroot actually is just as colorful on the inside as it is on the outside. So there's not really a big difference there. I'm having some green first for the leaves. Mm, more 
carmine. Let's do more of the carmine here on the middle and only fill in the rest afterwards with the aubergine and the indigo. So this is maybe a bit more of a purpley beetroot. If you buy them in the stores, they sometimes look brown because there's just earth on them. Sometimes they look a bit more purple, and sometimes a bit more red, I think. Or at least that's what they do in my store where I buy them. And I'm not a big fan of beetroot. I don't like the earthy smell because it, it's, um, it's not the pleasant earthy smell. So if it rains and the earth, the dirt really smells nice, like fresh rain and stuff. It's not that kind of an earthy smell. It's more like the something's molding. And I don't like that smell. And uh, beetroot kind of sometimes, most times, smells that earthy. <coughs> and also sometimes, most times, uh, tastes that earthy. And I do not like that at all. So I'm actually just juicing beetroot. That's fine. And I have to have the right combination of veggies and fruits too able to stand a huge amount of uh, big um, beetroots in my juice. Carrots are really helping. They take away the taste of the beetroot. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm having like one or two a week, every week. The I don't like them. <laughs> oh well, they do something good. And if I can manage to uh, make them not taste earthy, I'm actually really liking them. Okay, now I need a bit more of the aubergine just to enhance that cup here. There we go. Just a little tiny touch of uh, Payne's Grey to clean up the mess here. And also to ground the roots. I think I need just a smidge more of the green for my leaves. I think I want a bit of the, oh no, not the red, but the moss green, just a bit, very little. There we go. Okay, these were all the beet roots. Now I have to make some space at the other table again. And uh, next up, I have got two grape grapefruits that I have to paint. So I need a grapefruity color. Hmm, I think the ruby red is good for that. So I'm gonna take the ruby and maybe a bit of um, the carmine. I need a dark green, I still got some, and I need orange, like the sunny, sunny orange. So I'm going to take golden yellow 
and hmm, and orange. Maybe a bit of the flame red. Let's see. Where is it? Here it is. Flame red. And just a just a little bit, and I need some more the dark green and moss green because I'm almost run out. <laughs> of course I have to throw things because that's what you do. So let's uh, go in with the moss green and the dark green and then the r ruby red and um, the I've still got some carmine there, so that's fine. And all the yellows. Golden yellow. Orange. And a little bit of the flame red. Okay. Start with the greens. Some of the leaves. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, some of the red. Definitely going to use a bit of the scarlet. Uh, not the scarlet, oh gosh, the carmine. Definitely gonna pink this up a little bit. Not pimp it, but pink it a little bit. Because grapefruit really have a pinkish kind of a red flesh there. Okay. And uh, now for the fruit itself. I'm going in with a little yellow. And then the orange. Also here. And with the flame red, going to shade the grapefruit in the back. Just to well enhance a bit of the contrast, you know. Also, maybe give a bit of shading here, just a bit. And as per usual, giving the painting the gray treatment. There we go.
Righto. The next one is the other grapefruit with the wedge. So, uh, taking the red first. Ooh, that's kind of pinkish. That's nice. And um, a little bit of the green for the leaf. And then all the rest of the yellow and the orange for base coating the fruit in the back. Some of them, some of those great fruits actually look a bit more orange or peachy colored from the outside and some are more yellow so I think this is one that's more on the yellow side and of course I also paint in the wedge and with the flame red going to shade the wedge as well as um, the uh, big one. There we go. I uh, need to put down some more paint spray at my palette. I've run out again. There we go. Now I do have one more sweet potato. Um, there's the Japanese sweet potato uh, that is dark red on the outside and yellow on the inside. And then there's the ones that I painted earlier that are orange and kind of orange. So I'm gonna take the yellow that I also used for the uh, grapefruit. Paint the inner parts of the um, of the uh, sweet potato, and then I'm putting down some more carmine. Uh, Carmine, some more, and also some more aubergine. Um, if I can find it, there we go. My tray of neo colors that I used is slowly getting really full. <laughs> I'm gonna have a long, long list of colors that I used on 
my blog. But then again, uh, well, I painted, or I'm still painting, 73 paintings. I think it's fine for me to use that many colors. I'm mixing the aubergine right into the carmine here. I'm going to shade them with uh, the blue indigo. There we go. I'm going to mix in the blue indigo into my red carmine aubergine mixture. It's just a bit of a darker tone here so I can do something like this and also something like this and this one here too needs a bit of darkness I'm going to take a little bit of the pure blue indigo and just add it here and there. Also, put here just a little bit. And uh, of course, this needs a defloater. Also called paints gray. So need to refill my brush in a second. Totally forgot that earlier. Yeah, I'm definitely running very low on water. There we go. Now I'm gonna refill my brush. On to the next. Pomegranate. I need dark red and dark red. So I'm going to take carmine and uh, ruby. I also need a li little smidge of pale yellow. Just a little, little bit. And um, I'm also going to mix in some aubergine there we go 
because um, it really makes for an almost Bordeaux kind of red. So I'm just going to put that down here on the tray. And I'm going to start with pale yellow. And that will be this part here. Gonna let that dry and then come in with a bit of red. Um, going to mix carmine with the um, aubergine and also the ruby red. Oh yeah, perfect. Have to be a bit careful here. Not to make things bleed, you know. Now we have to be really careful not to make things bleed too much, but the skin of the pomegranate is also red. Some more in there. Mm. Need a little bit of a warmer tone. Just a little bit, so I'm taking, what's you, scarlet, it's just a little bit warmer, it's not as purpley. I'm going to put in some pigment here, not too much. Also, some of these little seeds and at the skin. Ta-da! Uh, of course, it's gonna be some gray in there too. All right, though. That's pomegranate number one. And now I think I filmed enough for the vlog. <laughs> so let's do some more pomegranate. These are all the strawberries. Don't have to sort my stash here. Uh, there's a pomegranate. There's another one. I think I just had three. Yeah. All right. So let's pomegranate some more.
I'm adding more purple here. So the aubergine tone towards the lower part. Adding a smidge of the blue indigo here. And uh, then going in again with the red for these kernels here. Some warmer red and some purple here, just to really divide the two. A little bit of the warm red here and also here and here. Going in with a carmine and aubergine for the skin and then adding some of the scarlet. Pale yellow on the brush and just putting in some pigment there just to uh, have a bit of a yellowish tint for those uh, I don't know, dividers? I don't know what they are called. The dividers between the chambers, I think, is kind of correct. There we go. Need a bit more of the dark blue, purple, indigo tone for this part of the pomegranate. And then I can oh, actually need a bit of shadow down here too. A bit of a darker tone. And uh, now I can come in with Paints Gray and the ground. There we go. Pomegranate number two and final pomegranate is gonna come up. So here we go. Some more of the ruby red. Here. More of the dark purples here. Going to let this sit for a second and I'm going to dry the part in the palette that has the Payne's Grey. Because I need to put down some more, but I just saw I got some more blue indigo, so I'm going to put that here. And also here. 
Now, uh, let's go and search for the Payne's Gray. I think it's here. Yep, that's the one. I'm going to put down some more because I still have a couple of paintings to go. Let's dry this and uh, then I can go on. Hmm, let's see. Actually, yeah, that's not too bad. Carrots, uh, purple carrots. So I'm going to put down some more aubergine. And take the rest of the red on the palette. I soon have to clean it again because it's a really big, huge mess here. But I'm just going to use the purples to paint in the carrots. And I need to add some dark indigo. Blue indigo, that's actually the correct name of that color. Need to add some to uh, shade things. And I'm taking the moss green, dark green mixture just here to put in the green parts. And then I'm going to add some of the grass green and uh, yellow greens to add a bit of a yellow tint or a fresher tint of green to the plant screen part of the carrots. Just a bit here and there. Just makes it a bit more fresh and yummy looking. Uh, of course, got some more gray. Again, adding some darker tones here and I'm just gonna let it bleed together <coughs> excuse me don't have to watch it I can um, do something else in between
Okay, do I need anything more with somewhat of a... No. So I can clean my palette now because I need warm reds and uh, not cold reds for now. And you can see on my palette here there's a huge section with uh, cold reds that I don't need anymore. So next up I've got strawberries and for that I cleaned my palette and now I'm putting down of course the paint spray, no question about that. Putting down grass green and dark green for the leaves. And I'm going to put down cat, uh, cat red light. Need quite a bit of that. And scarlet. And I'm going to start with the greens. I'm going to mix the two. And then go in with the cat light. And I'm going to shade it with a bit of the scarlet. Just to, you know, intensify a bit of the color here. The lower hand side. Maybe also a bit here. See? 
and then I can put down some Payne's Gray underneath. Maybe a bit darker here. And there's the first strawberry. Some more strawberry greens up here. Uh, and here and here. Now I'm going for the bigger brush. Going in with the cat red again for that part here. Going in with a little scarlet to shade. And now I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to pull in the pigment here because these parts are white actually so I'm just having them be very light pink. Just a smidge of uh, scarlet. You wear a shade. And that's good enough for me.
there we do have number three of the strawberries so some more green Pretty much the same thing for all the strawberries here. Scarlet again for shading. Just adding some more of a brighter red there. Also here behind the front berry. <laughs> That's a technical term. And uh, here I want some pigment there. And then I'm cleaning my brush and I'm again going to pull in the pigment towards the white part of the cut berry. Just a little smidge of dark red here. And some more down here. And I can go in and paint the ground. I, what I really like about this technique and the supplies that I'm using is once you got the hang of it, it's really fast to produce some sketches there that are, well, looking colorful, you're doing watercoloring, and you're also illustrating, like, with a pen and ink. So there we go. And final strawberry. I need some more of the light red. Let me get this one. But I'm going to start with the green. Going to add a bit of the yellow green. Then I can paint in some cat yellow again. Uh, cat yellow. Mm hmm. Cat red. Should maybe concentrate a bit more what you think. Okay. 
second berry also has to get some red. And I'm going to add, of course, the scarlet red. So carefully going around the greens here with the scarlet. Now it's time to, of course, clean up this edge here, but also painting in some Payne's Gray. I don't care for the red bleeding, that's totally fine. But I need to add some more. This is a little too light for my personal taste and I don't have any pigment anymore on my palette. So putting down some more liquefying and going around the berries. See? And uh, I'm almost done, folks. Almost. It's just one more apple, two cranberries. No, there's another apple. Two more apples and two cranberries. And then I am done. So that will then end the video. But uh, I need some pale yellow first. And also some raw umber. No, that's black. I need. Oh, I think there it is. It's a raw umber, yes. Still have the red, but I think I could add some more scarlet and some more. So there's the star scarlet. And I need some more of the, uh, yeah, for the next one, for the other apple, I need some of the yellow green. Still have enough gray, I think. So let's go about it. So let's start with pale yellow. And then some raw umber. Also for the stem. And uh, some red, some cat red for the apple here. Mm. 
and adding some scarlet here at the edges. like the apple from Snow White. And some more here and also on this side. Some more red here and just a bit more here and then on the bottom and I uh, think that's enough color and just add a tiny little light gray not too dark I want the apple to really pop and I think it goes better when I have a light gray surface and just a bit of a darker one here underneath the wedge. Maybe even just a smidge darker. There we go. The next apple, light yellow, pale yellow here. Some um, raw umber there and also here on the stems. And maybe a bit more on these thingies. Uh, some more green for the leaf. Bit of a darker tone too. Okay and uh, now it's time to color the apples. It's more of a pinkish one. And adding some cat red. More cat red on top of this apple too. So I'm pretty much just um, blending the cadmium red with the scarlet red on all of the apples here. I think this one could use a bit more ruby, uh, not ruby, cat yellow, ah, cat red. I really, <laughs> I'm feeling the long hours of filming, but well, I want to get done with this step of the project. So a little more paints gray, very, very little, as you can see, it's very light. Just to ground the apples. Uh. 
And now I'm moving on to the final two, um, which are the cranberries. So I need a dark green and kind of like a raw sienna and a dark red. Uh, I think combination of ruby and scarlet would be perfect. Ruby and scar. Hmm. Ruby and Ruby and let's see uh, Rosiana first Ruby and maybe I need like a Bordeaux red now oh, let's go for Carmine Ruby and Aubergine but uh, first I have to put down some paints gray some raw sienna just a little bit for the inner parts here I need to put down some dark green and moss green and then some carmine, some ruby, and aubergine. I'm going to start with the raw sienna so that it can dry a bit while I paint the leaves. There are the leaves. Um, the younger ones are maybe a bit more mossy green, the older ones are maybe a bit more dark green there. Now on to the berries. Um, gonna mix the carmine with the aubergine. Now I'm going in with the um, ruby red or well, scarlet, whatever it was that I said that it was. <laughs> Already forgot. Ah, gosh, guys, I'm I'm really feeling that I've been at this coloring here for hours. Um, kind of in the kind of zoning out almost. Which is usually something I really like when I paint without talking, without a camera. But uh, it's not very helpful for you folks. So to make sure that I um, that I keep in the zone for at least one more painting. There we go, and that's it. 
that leaves me with the final painting for today. And I'm gonna start again with the raw sienna. Moving on to the leaves. The upper one needs a bit more of the moss green, just a smidge, there we go. And uh, I'm doing the same as before, first going in with the mixture of the carmine and the aubergine. And I'm going to throw my brush, of course, because that's what you do as a professional, don't you think? No, well, I didn't think so either, but I did it anyways. And then I'm adding a bit of the, I think it is ruby red, to the berries. And by having two or three colors put down here, I ensure that these berries do not look flat. They would look kind of flat if I had just one color down. So this actually adds to the texture and the, well, dynamic, this painting kind of looking uh, quite, um, uh, let's say fresh and um, vivid, colorful, dynamic, all of that. And to add some more of the dark green to the leaves, find they kind of lost their vibrancy against the berries. There we go. And now I'm going to paint the final background. It's the final background um, with, again, some paints gray. I hope you enjoyed this very long video. Um, but I uh, really wanted to make sure that I don't have another video just like this next week. I wanted you to see uh, the next step next week. So hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below as per usual. And uh, I will make sure that I come back to you as fast as I can if you leave me some some uh, wonderful words there. I'm going to see you next Monday on this show with the next step of this particular project. And until then, I hope you have a great week. Check out the other art videos or board game videos if you want to see the board game videos uh, or the vlog. Check them out on this channel. They're all there for you to access. And uh, I'm going to see you. Have a wonderful week. Take good care. And um, enjoy. Have fun. Do something nice for you. That would be an awesome thing, don't you think? <laughs> Have fun, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>